Uh, how powerful is his mercy? Without even inquiring about the king, the Lord made everything safal, successful. And Srila Prabhupada comments, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy is so powerful that it acts automatically. If a person renders loving service to Krishna, it never goes in vain. It is recorded in a spiritual account, and in due time, it will fructify. This is confirmed by the Bhagavad Gita. Neha vikramana shosti pratyabhayo navidyate svalpam apyasya dharmasya trayate mahato bhayat. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has particularly bestowed upon all fallen souls in this age the most potent method of devotional service, Sankirtan, congregational chanting of the Lord's holy name. And whoever takes to it through the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is immediately elevated to the transcendental position. As Srimad Bhagavatam recommends, Yagyai Sankirtana Prayer, Yajantihi Sumeda Saha. A student of Krishna consciousness must receive Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy. Then his devotional service will quickly succeed. This was the case with King Pataparudra. One has to be noticed by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and a little service with sincere efforts will convince the Lord that one is a proper candidate for returning home back to Godhead. At first, Maharaj Prataparudra did not have a chance to meet Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But when the Lord saw that the king was serving Lord Jagannath as a menial sweeper, the Lord's mercy upon the king became a solid fact. When Maharaj Prataparudra, in the dress of a Vaishnav, was serving the Lord, the Lord did not even inquire who he was. Rather, he had compassion upon him and embraced him. Srila Prabhupada therefore often repeated the instruction of his Guru Maharaj, don't try to see Krishna, but try to act in such a way that Krishna will see you. The, this is the meaning, real meaning. It's not that we only see Krishna, but more important is that we present ourselves before Krishna. And uh, Prabhupada said, we want a certificate from Krishna. This man has done some service. So whether we're before the deity or whether we're, of course, we're always before the deity, Krishna's everywhere, but we should act in such a way that Krishna will see, oh, this man is sincerely doing some service, even a little service. And especially, Prabhupada points out, Sankirtan has the best service, Sankirtan Yagya. In the in a humble mood, in the mood of a menial servant, humble servant, and if one is noticed by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then his life becomes safal, successful. Krishna Kaviraj Goswami wants to point out that nothing could compare to the Lord's mercy toward Maharaj Prataparudra. This is the word deko, just see. And Chaitanera Kripa Mahabho. How powerful is the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is also confirmed by Prabodhananda Sarsati. Yat Karunya Kataksha Vai Bhavatam. Even a little of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy serves as a great asset for spiritual advancement. Therefore, the Krishna consciousness movement must be spread through the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. 
when Rupa Goswami experienced the mercy and magnanimity of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he said, Namo Mahabhara Nyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gorutushe Sri Lalochandas Thakur has also sung Padama Karuna Pahudvijan Nitai Gorachandra. The two brothers, Nitai and Gor, are so kind that no one can compare to them. Similarly, Srila Narutam Das Thakur has son, Rajendra Nandana Jay, Shachi Shuta Hoilo She, Balaram Hoilo Nitai, Tina Hina Yotachilo Hariname Utavilo, Tar Sakshi, Chagai Bhagatai. Just to deliver all the sinful persons of this age by propagating the chanting of the holy name. Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram have invented as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu. Jagai and Madhai are evidence of their success. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's special mission is the deliverance of all fallen souls in Kali Yuga. Devotees of Krishna must persistently seek the favor and mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu become fit to return home back to Godhead persistently, uh, keeping at it, uh, always seeking the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Srila Prabhupada, following in the mood of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, saw the Jagannath Ratiyatra as an opportunity for spreading the mercy of Krishna, spreading Krishna consciousness to everyone. Tindam Mahaprabhu, with some confidential devotees, he used to discuss very confidential topics, or with great scholars like Prakashananda Sarsati, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, he used to discuss, he, he did discuss philosophical matters. But for the people in general, the main thing was Hari Kirtan and Krishna Prasad. This is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement. For the general people in general, Hari Kirtan. Just hear the holy name of Krishna, chant. Hare Krishna, and take Krishna Prasad. It's such an attractive thing. And then together with the festival, a procession of Lord Jagannath, there's an American expression, everyone loves a parade. Everyone loves a parade. So we have a colorful parade and so many, uh, yes, big procession. But the essence of the parade is, of course, the service of Lord Jagannath, the opportunity to render some service to Lord Jagannath. If anyone pulls the ropes or sees the deity, he becomes eligible to go back to Godhead. And especially, the, by hearing the holy name of Krishna, people become so fortunate. No one can calculate what is the value of the holy name of Krishna or coming in touch with the holy name of Krishna. The holy purna shuddha nitya mukta tam namanamino. There's no difference between Krishna and his holy name. And all of these conditioned souls who've had who've turned away from Krishna, Vimukha Chaita Saindriyati. I've made a, a humbug society for sense gratification. After millions of births, they can hear the holy name of Krishna. And that just even a moment, even a little bit, Swapam Apyasya Dharmasya, Trayate Mahatobhaya can save them from the greatest danger. So, Kirtan, 
for Sodom, and a little philosophy. And those who are philosophically inclined, they can inquire further, try to understand more. But in the beginning, especially, just chant Hare Krishna, just hear Hare Krishna, join, enjoy the parade, and take some Krishna prasad. Uh, this is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy that in this age people are very fallen. They're not great philosophers. Their activities are mostly uh, in the Jagai Madhai Sampradai, intoxicants, meat eating, illicit sex. Mm -hmm. So much foolishness and degradation. But just by Krishna, Kirtana Deva Krishnasya, Mukta Sangha Param Vrajet, the Kali Yuga's an ocean of faults, Kaler Dosha Nidhe Rajan, Astihi Ekamaha Gunaha. But one good thing is there, only one. Kirtana Deva Krishnasya, Mukta Sangha Param Vrajet. Prabhu Bole, Ke to me. Korila Morhito Achambite Ashi Piao Krishna Lila Amrito. Finally, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Who are you? You've done so much for me. All of a sudden, you've come here and made me drink the nectar of the pastimes of Lord Krishna. Krishna Lila Amrito. Raja Kohe, Ami Tomar Dashe Ranudash, Brityar Brityakoro E Morash. My Lord, I'm the most obedient servant of your servants. Tomar Dashe Ranudash. It is my ambition that you will accept me as the servants, servant of your servants. Uh, Brityar Britya Koro. Please make me Brityar Britya. Not Britya, not the servant, but Brityar Britya. Make me the servant of your servant. E Moraj. This is my ambition. Purport. The greatest achievement for a devotee is to become a servant of the servant servant of the servants of the Lord. Actually, no one should desire to become the direct servant of the Lord. That is not a very good idea. When Prahlad Maharaj was offered a benediction by Nishingadev, Prahlad rejected all kinds of material benedictions, but he prayed to become the servant of the servants of the Lord. And Dhruva Maharaj was offered a benediction by Kuber, treasurer of the demigods, Dhruva unlimited material opulence. But he simply asked for the benediction of becoming the servant of the servants of the Lord. Kolavecha Sridhar was a very poor man, but when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted to give him a benediction, he also prayed to be allowed to remain a servant of the servants of the Lord. The conclusion is that being the servant of the servants of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the highest benediction one can desire. His Holiness Tamal Krishna Maharaj also entitled his book, Servant of the Servant. This is the aspiration of a devotee, not directly to be Krishna's servant, but to be the servant of the servant. Even Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Gopi Bhartu, Yo, Dasha Dasha Anudash, servant of the servant of the servant. Prabhupada said, the more times you add servant, the more elevated your position. The more time you, times you add servant, the more elevated your position.
tabi mahaprabhu tare aishwarya de kaila kareha na kaive e nished korila. Then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu showed the king some of his divine opulences. But he forbid the king to disclose this to anyone. And Kaviraj Goswami also doesn't tell us what, what it was that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu showed. Aisharya Daiki Daiki showed something, something divine, divine opulences, Aisharya. But the child Nimai came and stole the offering, then stole it again, then stole it again. So then, the, by that time, everybody was asleep in the house. So the Brahmin was crying that this child is spoiling everything. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, I'm calling, you're calling for me, so I'm coming. What's the problem? Then Chaitanya and the Mahaprabhu revealed to the Brahmin his position as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but gave the same instruction, don't tell, don't disclose this to anyone. Raja, hena kyan kabu na koilo prakash, anture shakal jane bahir udas. Although within his heart, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu knew that it happened. Externally, he did not disclose it, nor did he disclose that he knew that he was talking with King. The Lord kept up the, um, stick, stuck with the script that this was uh, an unknown Vaishnav who was reciting some verses and the Lord gave him mercy. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu knew this is King Prataparudra. Prataparudra Bhagya Deki Bhaktagane Bhaktagane Raja Rajare Prashangse Shave Anandita Mohani. Seeing the Lord's special King Prataparudra, the devotees praised the king's good fortune and their minds became open and blissful. Imagine, they, they'd been trying so hard to get some mercy for this king. They knew. Maharaj, we are not able to hear. I think your screen froze. Hare Krishna. Okay, we lost our connection there for a moment. I think we're back on this. Yes, we can hear now, Maharaj. This is characteristic of a pure Vaishnav. He's never envious if another receives the mercy and strength of Sri Chaitanya. A pure devotee, a pure Vaishnav is very happy to see a person elevated in devotional service. Unfortunately, there are many so-called Vaishnavas who become envious to see someone actually recognized by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It is a fact 
that no one can preach Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's message without receiving the special mercy of the Lord. This is known to every Vaishnava. Yet there are some envious people who cannot tolerate the expansion of this Krishna consciousness movement all over the world. They find fault with the preacher who has spread this movement and do not praise him for the excellent service he has rendered in fulfilling Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission. Of course, Prabhupada is speaking of his contemporaries who, for the most part, we have to say, uh, weren't that Srila Prabhupada had achieved success. They should have been, as we say in America, over the moon. They should have been so delighted, so satisfied, so joyous that someone had finally spread Krishna consciousness all over the world. But Prabhupada said they, they weren't. They were envious. Why, why him? Not why, why not us? So, of course, this is old history. Now things have changed considerably. No one can deny the extraordinary success of Srila Prabhupada and his Krishna consciousness movement. But it's a lesson to us also that we should not be envious of our contemporaries. We should be happy if someone spreads Krishna consciousness, someone becomes Krishna conscious, even surpassing us, or if someone spreads Krishna consciousness in a way that surpasses us, we should be happy. Krishna will be more pleased. This is the mood of the spiritual world. No one is sorry to see someone else pleasing Krishna or satisfying Krishna. Everyone is more pleased. In the third canto, it's described that the, there are so many great devotees in Vaikuntha praising the Lord in so many ways by poetic verses and songs and so on. But when the bees are chanting Hare Krishna, then the, everyone stops to listen to their kirtan. People don't say, oh, bees, what, what the heck is a bee? Who cares for your buzzing? Buzz, buzz, buzz. No, oh, bees are chanting Hare Krishna, very nice. This is the mood of a Vaishnava, not to try to push others down or minimize or criticize, but to appreciate. That's the the nindadi shun, shuno rida ipsita sangalabdva. The sign of an advanced devotee is that his heart is free from the propensity to criticize others. Of course, one may say, then why is Srila Prabhupada criticizing others? Uh, but that's his, his duty as the founder of the Krishna consciousness movement to present things in such a way that his followers and disciples would get the proper understanding. And at the end, of course, Srila Prabhupada was very contrite. He said to his god brothers who came to see him, that please forgive me for the offenses I committed in the course of uh, preaching in the course of preaching. So anyway, Prabhupada's campaign to spread Krishna consciousness is now acknowledged by practically all the Vaishnavas. One of the acharyas of in Gaudiya, one of the Gaudiya Mats, he said, we're all just uh, eating the remnants of Swami Maharaj. Huh? We're, He's the one who's spread it everywhere. And we're getting, we're getting the benefit also by his efforts. Some uh, 
but yes, by his efforts. So the, 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 the instruction is there for us that we should be appreciative and not sorry to see others advancing or succeeding. If they're succeeding, that's our success. Krishna is pleased, then we're pleased. Tandavat kori raja bahire chalila, yola hashta kori shab bhaktire vandila. Submissively offering prayers to the devotees with folded hands and offering obeisances to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the king went outside. So this is the standard of, of King Pratap that he didn't also didn't think that all right, not only am I the king, but now Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given me mercy. I was fortunate. He's shown me special opulences that he doesn't even want me to tell others about. But he submissively offered prayers to all the devotees and offered obeisances to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. kori raja bahire chalila. The, it was, after all, by the mercy of the devotees that the king had achieved the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Actually, basically, everyone's position, all of us, how does anyone get the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or come in touch with Krishna consciousness? It's by the mercy of devotees. It's by the mercy of devotees. Lava Matra Shadu Shange Sarva Shiddhi Hoy. By even a moment's association. And the devotees are working hard to give mercy, following in the footsteps of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They're trying to distribute Krishna's mercy, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy, Lord Jagannath's mercy very energetically, very vigorously, very with great determination, undergoing a lot of trouble sometimes just to spread the Krishna consciousness movement. Prabhupada said sometimes just to bring one person to Krishna consciousness, we have to shed gallons of blood. It means our own blood, not that we're going around killing people, but that we have to invest so much so much energy just to make one person Krishna conscious. So devotees are acting in this way. Then the, the people benefit. Someone gets a book, someone hears the holy name, someone gets some prasadam, someone comes into the association of devotees. So it's all by the mercy of the devotees. And therefore, how appreciative we should be for the mercy extended to us. We, without the mercy of the devotees, we would all be lost. And therefore, again, our ambition should be to become servant of the servants of the Lord. Not even directly servants, but servants of the servants. Well, this ends this, this section about the success of Maharaj Prataparudra's ambition to get the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And I'll keep reading a little bit more. Of course, I could answer some questions, but tell me what I should do. Should I answer some questions or shall I keep going? Madhupati Prabhu, what would be your preference? You can still continue. Okay. Madhyana Korila Prabhu La Bhaktagon Vaninat Prashad La Koilo Agaman. After this, Vaninat Roy brought all kinds of prashad, and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted lunch with the devotees. Sarvabhoma 
Ramananda Baninate Dia Prashada Patala Raja Bahut Kodiya. The king also sent a large quantity of prasadam through Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, Ramananda Roy, and Baninath Roy. In the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, especially at Jagannath Puri, prasadam, Krishna prasadam, is like a central player on the stage. So much happens just in relationship to Krishna Prasadam, Jagannath Prasadam. The, in an early newspaper article or magazine article about the Krishna consciousness movement, it must have been in the early days at 26 Second Avenue, the, some reporter mentioned Chaitanya Charitamrita as being a cookbook devotees must have said something. They'd, they'd never read Chaitanya Charitamrita, but they knew that there were so many recipes, as it were. Mm -hmm. So, of course, we know there's so much more in Chaitanya Charitamrita. But it's also a fact that Jagannath Prasadam plays such a role in the loving dealings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with his devotees and even with the ordinary people. Lord Chaitanya would go into ecstasy just tasting Jagannath Prasadam. There's a, a whole chapter practically dedicated to describing how Lord Chaitanya entered into transcendental ecstatic, a transcendental ecstatic mood simply by relishing prasadam and thinking that Krishna's lips have touched this food. And then he'd re remember that Krishna's playing his flute with those lips and he'd remember the gopis criticizing the flute. There is some envy in the spiritual world. This is transcendental. That this, this, what is this? Of course, they appreciate it also. But what is this? And what pious activities have, has this flute performed? It's just a stick. It's just a, a, a bamboo stick with some holes in it. But he's tasting the nectar of Krishna's lips. What pious activities must he have, must he have performed? And how happy his, his parents must be. The, the, the rivers are like the parents of the bamboo because they nourish the bamboo. So in this way, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he just went off into trance tasting Krishna Prasad. And there's so much more about Jagannath Prasad mentioned in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Balagandi Bhogair, Prashad Uttam Ananta Nishakari Prashad Aila Jar Nayanta. The prasadam sent by the king had been offered at the Balagandi festival and included uncooked milk products and fruits. It was all of the finest quality, Uttam, and there was no end to the variety, Ananta. Jana Pana Paira. Amra, Narikela, Kantal, Nana Vidta Kadalaka, Ar Vijatal. There were curd and fruit juice and coconut and mango, dried coconut, jackfruit, various kinds of bananas, tall fruit. And Purport says this is the first list of prasadam offered to Lord Jagannath. This is one of the wonderful opulences of Lord Jagannath, how he enjoys, he's the supreme enjoyer, how he enjoys the offerings of his devotees. And Prabhupada was commenting on Bhungte Bojayate Chaiva in the loving exchange between devotees of giving prasadam and accepting prasadam. He also put it in the context of 
a loving exchange with the Lord. The devotees expressed love for the Lord by offering so many things. And the Lord expresses his love by blessing them with Krishna Prasad. So there were oranges, grapefruits, tangerines, almonds, dried fruits, raisins, dates. Manohara, Laru Adi, Shoteka Prakar, Amrita Gutika Adi, Kshirasa Apar. Hundreds of different kinds of sweetmeats like Manohara, Laru, sweets like Amrita Gutika, and various kinds of condensed milk. So Manohara Laru is a kind of sandesh, and there are so many items. Of course, Bengal is especially famous for these many kinds of milk sweets. And as far as possible, Prabhupada wanted us to learn these things and offer them to the deity, offer them to Krishna, so that Krishna would enjoy Amrita Manda Sarabati Ar Kumdakuri Saramrita Sarabhaja Ar Sarpuri. Papayas and Sarabati, a kind of orange, and crushed squash, and cream, fried cream, a kind of puri made with cream, Sarpuri. Parivalab Senoti Karpur Malati Dalima Maricha Laru Navata Amrti. Sweets known as Haribalab, sweets made of Senoti flowers, Karpur, camphor flowers, and Malati flowers, pomegranates, sweets made with black pepper. Sweets made with fused sugar and amrita jalebi that appears to be jalebis. Padmachini, Chandrakanti, Kaja, Kandasar, Vyari Kadma, Tila Kajar, Prakar. Lotus flower sugar, bread made from urdal, crispy sweetmeat. Sugar candy, fried rice sweets, sesame seed sweets, cookies made from sesame seeds. These are, this is the opulence of, of deity worship. The deity worship is not meant to be just bare bones. We offer the requisite number of offerings. Ideally, we want to increase. So that we know all sorts of wonderful things so that the devotees will, out of love, prepare so many nice items for the pleasure of the deity. And we see in especially, of course, there are so many temples in India and so many of them are just run down and worship is negligent or just some pujaris are showing the deity to make a living they if someone comes to visit the temple then they they wake up and wave a ghee lamp and put out a plate for offering but otherwise everything's dirty everything's whatever it is whenever it is but when deity worship is alive, when the devotees are alive, then everything's, un everything's radically clean, everything's radically punctual, and so many items are offered to the Lord with love and devotion. So in some of the major temples, in in Tirupati, in Natwar, uh, in Puri, we see that so many kinds of food are offered to the Lord and the prasadam is profusely distributed and it's just wonderful. 
So our Krishna consciousness movement should be like that, that people should know that if I come to the Hare Krishna temple, there will be wonderful prasadam. And it's been that way. So many devotees, especially in the foreign countries, have come just, they'll admit, just for the prasadam, that it's, it's so uh, attractive, so uh, astonishingly uh, nice. Naranga Cholanga Amra Riksher Akar Pula Phal Patra Yukta Khandar Vikar. Sugar candy sweetmeats formed into the shape of orange, lemon, and mango trees and arranged with fruits, flowers, and leaves. So not just nicely prepared, but nicely presented, made into these different shapes. We, those who've been to London especially, or even devotees who haven't, will remember Kulangana Mataji, a devotee from, elderly lady from Poland, who made so many beautiful sweets for uh, the, um, for, for Radha and Krishna at, at Bhakti Vedanta Mahar. The beautiful sandesh decorated with different designs and different colors and so uh, prepared with such, such love and devotion and then distributed also with great love and devotion. So how much Krishna must appreciate that kind of dedication and love. Tari Dugda Nani Takra Rashala Shikarini Salavana Murgankur Ara Kani Kani. The yogurt, milk, butter, buttermilk, fruit juice, a preparation made of fried yogurt and sugar candy, salty mung dal sprouts with shredded ginger. Lembu Kula Adi Nana Prakar Achar Likite Napadi Prashad Kateka Prakar. The, there were also various types of pickles lemon pickle, berry pickle. Indeed, I'm not able to describe the variety of food offered to Lord Jagannath. This is the glory, actually. Indian culture, that there are so many items known, made of fruits, grains, vegetables, milk products, and really they're meant to be offered to Krishna. It's not, of course, everyone can get so many nice items in any restaurant, but it's not the same. That sense gratification doesn't really gratify the, the senses. The senses complain, we're still not happy, but we're not going to let you go. Oh, you have us. But when the devotees prepare these things for Krishna's satisfaction, then uh, they become more satisfied. Actually, everything, the dancing was done for the Lord's satisfaction. The Cooking was done for the Lord's satisfaction. The singing was done for the Lord's satisfaction. Everything was done for Krishna's satisfaction. And what was the result? Everyone becomes satisfied. So the prophet said, Krishna is not so cruel that you offer him so many things and then he takes it all away. He leaves it for you. So in this way, the more Lord Jagannath enjoys or the the Lord enjoys, the more the devotees also become happy to relish Jagannath Prasadam or Krishna Prasadam. Um, and here, even a, a feast just of pickles, <laughs> um, Nimbu Achar and Berry Achar, and you, there can be carrots and there can be ginger and there can be so many different kinds of just pickles. And so many were offered to Lord Jagannath. In verses 26 through 34, 
Oh, then he finally says, indeed, na pari prashad katika prakar. I'm not able to describe the variety of food offered to Lord Jagannath. Purport in verses 26 through 34, the author describes the various foods offered to Lord Jagannath. He has described them as far as possible, but he finally admits his inability to describe them completely. Prashade purita hoila ardha upavan dekia santosh hoila mahapur mahaprabhur mon. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw half the garden filled with a variety of prasada, he was very satisfied. E mata jagannata koren bhojan, e shuke mahaprabhur jurai nayon. Indeed, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was fully satisfied just to see how Lord Jagannath accepted all the food. Purport, following in the footsteps of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, a Vaishnava should be fully satisfied simply to see a variety of food offered to the deity or Radha Krishna. A Vaishnava should not hunger for a variety of food for his own sake. Rather, his satisfaction is in seeing various foods being offered to the deity. In his Gurvastaka, Srila Vishnath Chakravarti Thakur writes, Chatur Vida Sri Bhagavat Prasada, Svadvana Triptan, Hori Bhakta Shanghan. Kritvaiva triptim pajata sadaiva vande guru shri charanavadanda. The spiritual master's duty is to engage his disciples in preparing varieties of nice foods to offer the deity. After being offered, this food is distributed as prasadam to the devotees. These activities satisfy the spiritual master although he himself does not eat or require such a variety of prasada. By seeing to the offering and distribution of prasada, he himself is encouraged in devotional service. This is the, the secret. How much can we eat? How much can we relish if we're in the enjoying mood? Well, something, actually, especially when it's prasada, we'll enjoy something, but when we see it distributed, when we see that the devotees are engaged in cooking for Krishna, offering Krishna so many kinds of nice prasadam, nice food, and then prasadam is being distributed to the devotees, to the guests, then we become more happy. How much can we eat? <laughs> But there's no limit to how much we can distribute. The, this is the, 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 of course, Lord Jagannath, he eats unlimitedly. If we're, he's the person who can eat without limits, without any consequences. We eat a little too much and then we're, we're finished. But Lord Jagannath can eat and eat and eat. eat. And he can distribute and distribute, just as it was said about Lord Chaitanya, that he could distribute with his large hands more than the devotees could eat. They would, they'd be full up. But it said Lord Chaitanya didn't know how to distribute in small amounts. So this is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy uh, to distribute the Maha Mantra profusely to distribute Krishna Prasadam dis profusely, to distribute the message of Krishna profusely, so that the whole world can become happy by being engaged, by reviving their e eternal relationship with Lord Jagannath. So this is our, our Krishna consciousness movement. And Srila Prabhupada is speaking from the realized platform of a devotee of Lord Jagannath who 
simply wanted to glorify Lord Jagannath and see the whole world become Jagannath conscious, Krishna conscious. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Rama, Rama, Rama. Thank you all very much. Hare Krishna. Jagannath Swami Ki Jai. Hare Hare Ki Jai. Samaveta Bhakti Vrindi Ki Jai. Jai. Maharaj Ki Jai. Hare Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj, for being Thank with you. us on this auspicious day. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. right. And now, um, what happens next? Gauranga Prabhu is giving class, right? Yeah, Gauranga Prabhu is giving class at 8 o'clock. I don't know whether it's online or not. Yes. Gauranga Prabhu is online. No, we'll wait for some more moments. <laughs> You'd like to answer any questions, Gurmaj, or you have to? No, I, w- I was just going to wait for Garanga's class. So if there's... Um, if there's Maharaj, I'm trying to connect with uh, Garang Prabhu. Yeah. I'll take a question in the meantime, if there is. Yeah. Is there any questions? Ajay Prabhu? Yeah, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Uh, Prabhuji, uh, I would like to know what is the favorite uh, food of uh, Mahaprabhu? And, uh, favorite? Oh, yeah, favorite food of Mahaprabhu. Favorite food? Yeah. And uh, what did he say about the food? Like what type of food? We favorite food is devotional service. Yeah. <laughs> What patram pushpam palam toyam yome bhaktya priyashti? He'll even eat. Uh, Krishna says, uh, patram a, a a leaf, patram pushpam a flower, a fruit or water. If it's offered with love, I'll accept it. Vishnuath Chakravarti Thakur comments that a flower. I mean, who eats flowers? But Krishna becomes so ecstatic that if someone even offers a flower, he'll eat it if it's offered with love. So that's the thing. Of course, in Chaitanya Charitamrita, it's also said that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is very fond of shak. Shak means different kinds of spinach items. That was one of the favorite items of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So you're going to offer these things? Ajay? Yeah, probably. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I will love Very good. There's main, even a simple thing, if it's offered with love and devotion, that's the main component. Sometimes on, on Navadvi Prakrama, we would stop at the little home in a village of some disciples of Jaya Pataka Maharaj and a big Purkrama party and they would throw a big feast for the devotees practically all shock rice and two, three, four, seven, eight so many different kinds of spinach the red spinach and this spinach and that spinach all wonderful preparations this is a a feature of, of course, of Bengal and also a feature of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Just from spinach, we can make so many different kinds of things. For Americans, vegetables means peas and carrots with a little butter and salt and pepper. That's about what they know about vegetables. But what wonderful things can be done? What wonderful preparations? Therefore, at at our, in the early Krishna consciousness movement, these Sunday would be like 20 preparations. The, there'd be rice and then another kind of rice 
and then there'd be three, four, five kinds of vegetables, samosas, pakoras, a couple of chutneys, uh, and uh, kheer, and, and more. So who would not want to, to, who would not be attracted? All right. I was just keeping the seat warm for you, Garanga Prabhu. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Garanga Prabhu, for joining us. Hare Krishna. Pranam. Kaliyavas. Okay. Jai Jagannath. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Magyanati Miranda Sigyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Miratam Yenadas May Shri Guru Venamaha Namo Mishnupadaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutare Shri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Dinamini Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharani Nirvishishishun Nepati Paschata Deshatarani Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nitananda Sri Advaita Gadadar Sri Vasadi Guru Bhakti Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna So thank you very much uh, Madhupati Prabhu Devakinandan Prabhu for inviting me and uh, today is the most auspicious day of Rath Yatra here in India and for you it may be tomorrow I have been asked to speak uh, on the topic preparing the heart to receive Lord Jagannath. Anyera Hrdeman Moraman Brindavan Manevane Ekakuri Jani Tahar Tomar Padadway Karaha Yadi Uday Tabe Tomar Purna Kripa Jani. So Mahaprabhu during his Rathyatra dance, he actually indicates how to prepare our heart to receive Lord Jagannath's mercy and grace. And in this particular verse, he says, for others, their you know, mind and heart may be two different entities, but for me, Moraman Brindavan, my mind and heart are both one, and they are in they are always in Brindavan, they are never separated from Brindavan. So, the Jagannath Rathyatra is the most famous festival which has been going on for thousands of years. And the mood of Jagannath Rathyatra is Lord Jagannath, he leaves a Jagannath temple and is pulled by the devotee's love. And he comes towards the temple of Gundicha. So, the Jagannath temple represents Kurukshetra and the Gundicha temple represents Vrindavan. And so after Krishna left Vrindavan and the gopis were in great separation when Akrura was taking Krishna away. Evam Bravana Virahatura Brisham Brajastriya Krishna Vishakta Manasa Visrijalajja Rurudus Masusmaran Govinda Damodara Madhaveti. So the gopis were crying out in separation from Krishna and they gave up all of their uh, social sense of uh, shame and they came out in the open and they were really pleading and crying out to Krishna not to leave Vrindavan. But Krishna had his mission, Krishna had his plans and Krishna left Vrindavan. But while going, he just said, I will return back. And because Krishna made that promise, Krishna gave his word. So therefore, the gopis were waiting for Krishna to return back. So we see that the gopis are representing the topmost of those devotees who are expert in the exchanges of love. So the Srimad Bhagavatam is basically a manual for love. What exactly is love? 
and how can we fill our heart with the feelings of love and therefore pragada premere e sabhava achar nijadukka vighnadira nokore vichar the chaitanya charitamrita describes that love is defined as that feeling where although in a relationship there may be scarcity impediment discomfort and unhappiness still one's feelings for one's beloved does not break does not decrease does not stop and that is known as feelings of condensed love and therefore one values one's relationship with krishna more than any other uh, relationship in this world with any objects with any people any situation any circumstance and therefore right from the first canto of shrimad bhagavatam when maharaj parikshit is cursed to die in seven days and seven nights we find that although parikshit maharaj is saved by krishna in the womb of his mother and suddenly out of the blue he is cursed to die parikshit maharaj is not having any expectations from krishna that he should protect me physically and therefore he is not becoming upset and angry and annoyed with krishna for putting him in this kind of a near death situation without giving him sufficient notice and logic and reason and therefore heart filled with gratitude parikshit maharaj is offering his prayers to krishna tasseva meghasya parabareshu vyasakta chittasya griheshu bhikshnam nirved moolo dvijshap roopo yatra prasakto bhayama shudatte that on the other hand i am actually feeling very grateful to you my dear lord that you have put me in this situation so that i can actually prepare myself to attain the highest destination by giving up all of these material attachments otherwise on my own i was never going to be able to give them up and therefore i have full faith in your innermost intentions that you are our ultimate well wisher and whatever you are doing is for our benefit narad muni lost his mother when he was only 5 years old and when his mother departed tada tadam eshasya bhaktanam shama bipsatam anugraha manyamana pratishtam disham uttaram so the place where narad muni was processing this incident so the incidents and the events happen outside outside of us in the world around us but we do the processing and the analysis of and try to understand and comprehend those situations and events within our heart so therefore we have to prepare our heart in such a way that we are actually able to process all of these events and incidents in the following in the footsteps of the devotees in shrimad bhagavatam so therefore shrimad bhagavatam is actually like a manual for love it's a manual for us to be able to understand how in history lovers of krishna have actually experienced and expressed their relationship with krishna and especially when things are going well it's easy to put our weight behind a relationship but the real test of a relationship happens when things are not going so well and therefore love is tested by two things uncertainty and uh, change so uncertainty and separation it tests love and therefore here we find that when narad muni's mother departed he is saying tada tada hum ishasya bhaktanam sham one thing i was convinced was krishna is always the well wisher of his devotees bhaktanam sham abhitsutam he is always desiring the benefit of his devotees anugraha manyamana considering this calamity of my mother's departure to be krishna's grace upon me pratishtham disham uttaram i did not see this situation of my mother's death as krishna closing doors upon my face i take this that krishna is krishna is opening other doors for me to be able to experience 
higher realizations. And therefore, this entire Srimad Bhagavatam, right from the first canto till the tenth canto, has pastimes of devotees who have prepared their heart appropriately to experience and express their love for Krishna. That there may be unlimited reasons for a relationship to be broken, but still that relationship is not broken because in love, the beloved, the lover and the beloved do not expect pleasure from each other. They only expect to give pleasure to each other. And to give pleasure, they are willing to experience pain. So amongst the categories of lovers described in the Bhagavatam, the highest in that category is described in the 10th canto in the form of the gopis. And therefore, the gopis' mood of love for Krishna was such that they were willing to uh, pay the highest price to purchase Krishna's love and to maintain the relationship with Krishna. And when we say that they were willing to pay the highest price to purchase Krishna, it means that they were willing to go through the greatest pain, the most intense pain, for the longest period of time with total uncertainty and very, very extended separation. And therefore, one who is willing to pay the highest price is considered to be the greatest buyer. So therefore, the gopis purchased Krishna with their unlimited causeless love, which made Krishna to reciprocate with them and tell them, na parayeham niravajya samyujam. Actually, I cannot repay in any way, even in millions of, uh, you know, lifetime of Brahma's life, I cannot repay because you have purchased me so much with the purity and the intensity of your love. And therefore, when there was no news of Krishna returning, the gopis continued remembering Krishna and cooking for Krishna and doing everything they would do even when Krishna was present. The same activities they continued when Krishna was absent for an extended period of time. And therefore, their intensity in reciprocating with Krishna never decreased. Although they were in great pain. Brindabana Govardhan Yamuna Pulinavan Sei Kunje Rasa Dikalila Sei Brajer Brajajan Mata Pita Bandhugan Bada Chitra Kemane Pasarila. So at that time, Srimati Radharani and all the gopis and the cowherd boys and the Prajavasis they visit Kurukshetra. And the purpose of visiting Kurukshetra is because they hear that Krishna has come during a solar eclipse. And there is a huge army which is accompanying Krishna. And they think it's a great opportunity for us to meet Krishna again after a long time. But when the gopis and especially Srimati Radharani sees Krishna in his royal uh, you know, expression, Krishna as a king with armies, Krishna wearing all kinds of powerful kabachas or shields, armor, swords, arrows, elephants. So at that point, Srimati Radharani becomes very morose because she expects Krishna to be in the mood of Shamasundar Nandanandan. And therefore, Iha loka ranyahati ghodaratha dhvani taha pushpa ranya bhringa pikanada shumi. And she expresses to Krishna that actually my heart is broken because here I see loka ranya. This, this place, Kurukshetra, is a forest of people. Yes, it is an aranya forest, but of loka of people and the only sound I can hear is 
हाथी घोड़ रथ ध्वनि आई सी साउंड ऑफ आई हियर साउंड ऑफ एलिफेंट्स चैरियट्स हॉर्सेस बट माई हार्ट इज लॉन्गिंग फॉर ताहा पुष्पारण्य भृंग पीक नाद शुनि माई हार्ट इज लॉन्गिंग फॉर दैट फॉरेस्ट वॉट फॉरेस्ट पुष्पारण्य दैट फॉरेस्ट ऑफ फ्लावर्स भृंग पीक नाद शुनि वेर I can hear the sound of the bumblebees. I can hear the sound of the kokila. I can hear the sound of the peacocks. My heart is longing for those sounds. So, what does this indicate? That Shrimati Radharani's heart is not interested in receiving and accepting anything from Krishna. she is not interested in any of krishna's energies she is her heart is not at all contemplating even for one moment what is it that krishna can give me what can krishna offer to us she is not thinking about that because when one sees display of power one becomes very attracted a materialistic consciousness a heart filled with selfish desires becomes attracted to a scene where power is displayed because when we see the display of power we feel oh i can also receive some benefits from that power i can also partake of some of that power and i can also become powerful so therefore when one is interested in receiving benefits from the various opulences then one becomes very attracted to see the opulences and therefore that attraction towards opulences of this world and attraction towards personalities in this world who reflect the opulence like wealth like power political influence you know someone with very huge uh, property that indicates that yes some desire within our heart is there and we feel that a relationship with this person will also help me go up the ladder of power so therefore in kurukshetra krishna is demonstrating his power so when krishna demonstrates power radharani becomes repelled and she becomes disgusted and she is not at all interested and she says iha rajavesha sange sabha kshatriya gan taha gopavesha sange murali vadan she says here everybody is wearing dress of king iha raja vesha sange sab kshatriya gan and i see only kshatriyas here yes kshatriyas can help protect kshatriyas can help get more property more land more influence more power more wealth yes kshatriyas are known for benefiting in so many ways and therefore if radharani was interested in any of that then she would have become excited by seeing krishna and thinking oh i have such a old long standing relationship with krishna and krishna is demonstrating so much of power he is dwarkadish you know he is filled with all kinds of valuable jewels and let me try to calculate the value of each diamond you know sitting on krishna's diamond studded helmet wow just look at krishna's armor the armor is filled with jewels let me try to figure out how much that must cost and i'm really glad that i have such a close relationship with krishna and vrindavan for 11 years and uh, i should use that relationship you know to get some benefits now no shrimati radharani when she sees krishna demonstrating all of that 
power, she actually expresses this verse. Iha Raja Vesha Sange Sabakshatriya Gan Krishna, you are displaying the mood of a king and all the people surrounding you are various kings. Iha Raja Vesha Sange Sabakshatriya Gan and I am not so interested in any of this. I am least interested in any of this display of power. In fact, I'm not interested in receiving and getting anything from you. I'm not interested in what you can give. I am not interested in your powers and your energies. I'm interested in you. And therefore, Taha Gopa Vesha Sange Murali Vadan. I am longing to see you in your form as a cowherd boy. I am longing to see you adorning a garland of forest flowers which are easily accessible, which are inexpensive. I am longing to see you not adorning this powerful, expensive sword in your hand. I am longing to see a flute in your hand. And therefore, I am interested in a reciprocation of love with you. And I am very much eager to serve you in that mood. I am not interested to receive anything from you. And therefore, the only thing I am looking for from you is that you come to Vrindavan and we get an opportunity to serve you and please you. Braje tomar sange sukha sei. Braje tomar sange sei sukha aswadan. Sei sukha samudre iha nahi ekakan. And she says, When I get an opportunity to serve you in Vrindavan, along with all the other gopis. So, Braje tomar sange in your association. And all we expect is you are there within the forests of Vrindavan and we get an opportunity to serve you. Braje Tomar Sange Sei Sukha Aswadan That Sukha, that pleasure which we receive in serving you and pleasing you. Sei Sukha Samudrera That pleasure in giving you pleasure in serving you and pleasing you is like an ocean. Say Sukha Samudrera Nahi Ekakan. Here, Say Sukha Samudrera Iha, here in Kurukshetra, when you are demonstrating all your, for your royal power and Shakti, and you are displaying that right in front of us, compared to that ocean of bliss available in Vrindavan. Here, I do not see even one drop of that bliss. Therefore, Krishna, we have prepared our heart in such a way that we only are used to experiencing joy in giving you joy. In giving and in serving, we receive joy in our heart while taking or accepting from you any benefits, any help, any opulences which you can offer to us, that does not give our heart any pleasure and any joy. And therefore, this beautiful festival of Rathyatra is a wonderful demonstration, a wonderful celebration of that state of the heart where the heart is filled with the desire to serve and please Krishna selflessly. Where the heart is prepared to only focus on opportunities which we may get to please Krishna and to receive Krishna's grace in the form of opportunities to serve 
that heart should be prepared in such a way that following in the footsteps of Srimati Radharani, our heart also becomes eager to be willing to go through uncertainty, to be willing to go through various kinds of separ uh, episodes of separation where when we are serving, we are not very sure whether the person we are serving, are they satisfied or not? Where we do not even have the pleasure of reciprocation. That's what separation does. That the greatest challenge in serving in separation is you are serving and serving and serving and you do not really know that the person or the persons you are serving, how are they impacted by your service? So therefore that really tests your sense of selfless duty and love. And therefore Radharani did not for one moment stop contemplating about serving and pleasing Krishna in all those years of separation. And then when she sees Krishna, her heart is so uncompromising in her intention to only serve and give Krishna and not be served and received from Krishna that she just is praying to Krishna that somehow if you can come to Vrindavan, that is the place where we have the right ambience and the opportunity where we can serve you and please you. Amalaya punahalila karaha vrindabane tabe amar manovancha hoito purane. And she says that therefore, please, why don't you now? I request you to come to Vrindavan. Ama laya punaha again. Please join us in Vrindavan. And karaha Vrindavane. And ama tabe amar mano vancha. At that point, all of our heart's desires. Tabe amar mano vancha. Hoeto purane. Hoeto purane means will be completely fulfilled. So Radharani says, Hoeto purane. Mano vancha hoeto purane means, Mano vancha means ambition. Mano vancha means heart's desires. So therefore, she is uh, demonstrating to all of us. When will our heart's desires be fulfilled? Our heart's desires will not be fulfilled by receiving gifts from Krishna, by taking various opulences from Krishna, by being attracted to Krishna's opulences in a way <coughs> which makes us expect those opulences from Krishna. No. <coughs> Any kind of feelings of greed, of lust, of being in a situation where we can enjoy any of the gifts given by Krishna will not fulfill our heart at all. Tabe amar mano vancha hueto purane. So, how do we prepare our heart? We prepare our heart by following in the footsteps of the intentions and the desires and the heart's feelings of Srimati Radharani, which she is expressing at Kurukshetra because she has waited for nearly a century for Krishna's association. And after a century of separation, she is remembering the decade of service in association with Krishna in Vrindavan. But that century of separation is not making her change her heart's ambitions and heart's desires and heart's intention. 
her heart's desire remains same. What is that? Amalaya punahalila karaha brindavane. That the only expectation I have is Krishna, you come to Vrindavan. You give us an opportunity to serve you in Vrindavan. And why is Vrindavan so special? Because every atom, every molecule, every leaf, flower, every fruit, every bird, animal, insect, gopa, gopi, they are constantly absorbed in only thinking of two things, how to serve Krishna and how to please Krishna. And therefore, my heart's desire is that not just that you give me an opportunity to serve, because Krishna may say, well, I'm here in Kurukshetra, you can serve me. Why do you want to take me to Vrindavan? You can serve me. There are so many people I have brought from Dwaraka. There are other kings with me. There are other soldiers with me. So it's no problem. You can serve me here. But Radharani is saying that I want to serve you in the association of those who are all in the same mood to only serve you and please you every moment without expecting anything in return, the mood of Vrindavan. And therefore, I request you to come there with me and allow me to serve you. So, Radharani is therefore expressing and making a case for Krishna that please try to understand the Brajwasi's heart for so many years that they have been experiencing separation from you. Have you forgotten Vrindavan? Have you forgotten Govardhan? Have you forgotten Yamuna? Have you forgotten the forests around Yamuna? Say Kunje Rasadikalila, have you forgotten those Kunjas where we have performed Rasalila? Okay, you may have forgotten us and all these things, but say Brajer Brajajan, what about all the Brajavasis? You have forgotten them? Mata Pita Bandhugan, have you forgotten Mother? Yashodamai, have you forgotten Father Nanda Maharaj? Have you forgotten all your friends? Bada Chitra, this is very, very astonishing. Kemani Pasarila, how could you forget? so many of your most intimate associates and devotees. So then Krishna may say, oh, so you are accusing me of being heartless, of being cruel. You are accusing me of dereliction of duty. You are accusing me of breaking relationship. You are accusing me of being irresponsible. Is that what I hear? So Radharani says, Vedagdamrdu satagun sushilas nigdha karun Say Tomar Tomar Doshabhasa Tumi Tomar Nahi Doshabhasa Tabeje Tomaraman Ude Nahis Mare Brajajan Say Amara Durdaiba Bilasa. She says, O oh Krishna, how can I accuse you of being heartless? How can I accuse you of being cruel, of breaking our heart? No. The Shastras are glorifying your qualities as Vidagdha, you are a refined gentleman, Mridu, Satgun with all good qualities, Sushrila, you are well behaved, Shastras say, Snigdha, the Shastras say you are the most compassionate and soft hearted, Snigdha Karun, the Shastras are glorifying you as very compassionate and very soft hearted. And therefore, to me, Tomar Nahi Doshabhas. Therefore, Krishna, there is no way you can be at fault. Sorry, if you think that's what I'm trying to say. No, no, I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is, Tabaye Tomaraman Nahi Smare Brajajan. That in spite of being so refined, so gentlemanly, with full of divine qualities and compassion, if your mind and your heart 
did not remember the Brajavasis. Who is responsible? Say, Amara Durdai Babilas. Tabaye Tomaraman Nahib Smare Brajajan. If that soft hearted Krishna could not remember Brajavasis for more than a century, who is responsible? Say, Amara Durdai Babilas. It is only my misfortune, nothing else. Therefore, Srimati Radharani's heart is not filled with blame, complaint, negativity, or accusation. No. Although she, the gopis, and the Brajavasis have gone through a lot in separation from Krishna, Srimati Radharani is demonstrating a glimpse of a pure, sparkling, loving heart. A loving heart can never hold grudge, complain, feelings of accusation within towards the beloved. And therefore, although Krishna has neglected and never come for such a long period of time and Radharani is pleading with him to come but she is qualifying her statements by saying that I am not holding you responsible or accusing you that you did not come and therefore you are at fault. All I am saying is our misfortune was such that we could not get your association for so long and your mind did not remember us for so long. It is not your fault. It is our fault. It is my fault. And therefore, a heart which is filled with love is filled with gratitude. It is filled with humility. It is filled with feelings of remorse. And if there are any complaints and fault-finding tendencies, it is directed towards oneself. And that is what Radharani, Srimati Radharani is demonstrating through her prayers at Kurukshetra of what should be the heart of a person who is actually preparing to bring Krishna to Vrindavan. If we are hoping to bring Krishna in our heart and make our heart Vrindavan-like, what should be our prayer? What should be our mood? And so Srimati Radhanai says, Nagani apna duk dekhi brajeshwari muk brajajaner hridaye bidare kiba mara brajavasi kiba jiao brajayasi kena jiao duk sahai bare. She says, Okay, I am not concerned about me, but look at Yashoda Mai. From the time you have left Vrindavan, she's just been crying unlimited tears flowing from her eyes, which have created a permanent impression on her cheeks. And therefore, the Brajavasi's heart has been broken. O oh Krishna, Kiba Mara Brajavasi, Kiba Jiao Brajayasi, either by declaring that you will not come. It makes life easy for us so that we can end our lives because we do not see any other reason in living, any other purpose for living apart from getting an opportunity to serve you. So therefore, Radharani is revealing another very important dimension of preparing our heart to receive Krishna in Vrindavan. And that is that a heart which is only looking for opportunity to serve as one's life and soul. So Radharani is saying the only purpose of our living, only purpose of our life is we get an opportunity to serve you in Vrindavan. If an opportunity to serve you in Vrindavan is not there, we would not even have lived so long. So what is life? Life is this that one considers 
opportunity to serve Krishna as one's life and soul. One considers prosperity as this opportunity to serve Krishna with life and soul. One considers adversity as losing any opportunity to please Krishna. That's the heart which attracts Krishna to come to Vrindavan. So she says, Keba Mara Brajabasi, if you, the day you had declared, I am never going to come, which translates as, you Brajavasis will never get an opportunity to serve me. If that one line, if we hear, then that's the end of life for us. Because for us, life means hoping for an opportunity to serve you. If the hope to serve you doesn't exist, then we don't feel like living. So therefore, she says here, Kiba mara brajavasi, kiba jiao brajayasi, or why don't you just come to Vrindavan right now? And then all of our, you know, a completely demoralized existence would be rejuvenated and we would be in ecstasy our hearts would be filled with joy kiba kiba mara brajavasi kiba jiao brajayasi that is life for us so what is life getting that opportunity to serve you and please you it's not about the details of that opportunity and therefore we should not confuse service with service attitude and service opportunity. Service attitude is the hope to serve. Service opportunity is when the doors for that opportunity actually open. And then the actual service is when we go through that door and we start engaging in that service. So therefore, we should eternally hold dear to our heart service attitude and hope for service opportunities but we should always be open for change in services so therefore when services change that doesn't change our service opportunity it doesn't change our service attitude because we are getting an opportunity to serve and please krishna in different ways in which he wants us to serve him. And therefore, Srimati Radharani, through her amazing prayers, which Mahaprabhu is recounting during the Rathyatra festival in dance, it is actually a reflection of what should be a heart which is preparing to receive Krishna and Vrindavan. And hearing these prayers, and seeing the state of Srimati Radharani's heart, then the gopis who are with Radharani filled, become filled with compassion. And then they create a chariot within their mind and place Krishna in that chariot. And they bring Krishna from Kurukshetra to Vrindavan in that chariot. And that beautiful pastime is represented by the Rathyatra and millions of people you know, of course, today is a different situation in India, not like the regular Rathyatra. But typically, Rathyatra means literally approximately 1.5 to 2 million people minimum. They manifest on that one street between Jagannath Temple and Gundicha Temple. And they're all there to pull on the ropes and express their solidarity with Srimati Radharani that yes, we are assisting you and trying to bring Krishna to Vrindavan to assist you in your desire to be able to serve Krishna in the flavor which you prefer. And that flavor in which you prefer to serve Krishna, where Krishna is a simple cowherd boy having only sweetness, Leela, Premna, Priyadikyam, Madhuryam, Venu Rupayoho, 
इति असाधारणं प्रोक्तं गोविंदश्च चतुष्टयम भक्तर सामर सिंधु एक्सप्लेन्स दैट द फोर एक्स्ट्रा क्वालिटीज व्हिच कृष्णा हैज इन वृंदावन इज कृष्णास लीलास विद हिज डिवोटीज प्रेमना हिज लव प्रियादिक्यम माधुर्यम कृष्णास ब्यूटी एंड हिज फ्लूट प्ले इति असाधारणं प्रोक्तं गोविंदस्य चतुष्टयम सो श्रीमति राधारानी इज इंटरेस्टेड इन दीस opportunities to serve krishna not to get and receive anything from krishna but she just wants only krishna and the opportunity to serve and please krishna so today on the occasion of the eve of rath yatra in new york all of us can make this prayer to shri shri jagannath baladev and subhadra mai to give us this opportunity to purify our heart so that through this purification of the heart we are in a position to actually constantly think about how we can serve and please krishna in the best possible way and therefore you know today's rath yatra for us here in india yesterday was gundicha marjan so maybe it is gundicha marjan for you there as per tithi so shila bhakti siddhant saraswati thakur explains that gundicha marjan represents the effort to prepare our heart to be in the mood the ideal mood which shrimati radharani is praying about yes she is praying about something which is here but my heart is here so how do i go from here to here so the gundicha margin actually represents the process of anartha nivritti by which we can actually transform our heart and so chari dike shat bhakta sab margin kari apne shodhena prabhu shikhana savare mahaprabhu himself was leading from the front with all the devotees and trying to showcase to all the devotees how it is important for us to be engaged in a very very minute cleansing of the gundicha temple and it translates into a very diligent determined dedicated you know patient effort to cleanse our consciousness our heart of number 1 kuti nati which is fault finding tendencies and duplicity second is pratishtasha to purify our heart from the desire from name fame and high position third is to purify our heart of kama desire for material gain fourth is to purify our consciousness and heart of nishiddha chara which is you know uh things which are forbidden in shastra so we should avoid accepting things which are forbidden in shastra and then fifth is we have to overcome the tendency for puja which is hankering for popularity and sixth is we should avoid jeev himsa which is envy of other living entities envy of other living entities in a gross way means killing other living entities or giving pain to other living entities for one's own pleasure just like ravana did and it also means that not being active enough in utilizing opportunities and creating opportunities for spiritual advancement for other conditioned souls so jeeva himsa means that i have a certain energy certain talent certain ability and i can create certain opportunities to facilitate jeevas to come closer to krishna so to be complacent and to be oblivious to opportunities of bringing the jeevas closer to krishna which means that showing serious dereliction of responsibility in our preaching duties also translates as jeeva himsa 
and therefore apart from the gross dirt which mahaprabhu cleansed in the gundicha margin then he went finer and finer and finer also to the extent that you know mahaprabhu as he was cleansing he was teaching everybody shatahaste korenjena kshalana marjan pratijana pashe jaye korana shikshan and mahaprabhu was cleansing the gundicha temple as if he had 100 hands which means he was demonstrating that we have to perform the process of cheto darpana marjanam the cleansing of our heart and consciousness with enthusiasm not in a bored complacent disinterested manner and therefore pratijane paashe jai karana shikshan and mahaprabhu was not only cleansing but also encouraging others that means to inspire other sadhakas in the association is also a very important duty in the process of anartha nivritti bhala karma dekhi tare kore prashamsan mane na milile kore pavitra bharsan and when mahaprabhu saw any devotee cleansing the gundicha temple nicely so mahaprabhu became very happy bhala karma dekhi tare kore prashamsam so mahaprabhu started glorifying that devotee acknowledging that devotee's efforts that means when we see a devotee practicing krishna consciousness nicely doing their sadhana bhajan preaching nicely it is our duty to appreciate their efforts acknowledge their efforts to encourage their efforts is an important duty mane na mele le kore pavitra bharsan and when mahaprabhu saw that somebody was not cleansing up to the mark or he was feeling neglected he was feeling he was like doing things in a neglectful manner then mahaprabhu would go and do pavitra bharsan bharsan means you know chastisement or feedback but pavitra means feedback giving feedback not with the intention to discourage but giving feedback with the intention to improve the person's Uh, bhakti to bring that person closer to krishna that is called as pavitra bharsan where the intention behind the feedback and chastisement is pure and through this mahaprabhu you know a day before rath yatra is demonstrating how we can actually cleanse our heart which is dirty and heart which is filled with kaam krodh lobh moh madamatsar purify that heart of all these different kinds of tendencies of gross tendencies of trying to enjoy sense gratification and sense objects and not just purify our heart of the gross tendencies but also purify our heart of the subtle tendencies and these subtle tendencies which take longer time to be purified including kutinati pratishthasha kama nishidha chara puja jiva himsa so both these gross and subtle tendencies of anarthas within the heart need to be purified then we can attain or we can then prepare our heart to be ready and favorable for receiving krishna in vrindavan to prepare our heart like gundicha altar so that krishna agrees to come just like the way shrimati radharani expresses in her prayers that i am not interested in anything which krishna gives or can give i am not interested in the royalty and the opulence of krishna and the energies of krishna i am simply interested in a simple opportunity to serve krishna in an op- in an ambience of simplicity in the association of other devotees who have a simple desire to also serve and please krishna this ambience of the simplicity of vrindavan 
is the highest opulence which anyone can expect in this human form of life. And that should be the mood of preparing our heart to receive Krishna in Gundicha temple as per part of the Pratyatara festival, which begins from Jagannath temple and comes to Gundicha temple. Thank you all very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Goranga Prabhu. Wonderful class. Wonderful significance of Ratyatra and trying to cultivate that mood to receive Lord Jagannath. Thank you very much. We'll take some questions. Goranga Prabhu? Yeah, sure. There's a question. You can probably we have to say something. No, I just wanted to thank uh, Gorang Prabhu for uh, sharing his Brajavasi uh, heart with all of us. It was a feast to the ears and the eyes. First uh, hearing His Holy Night Jaidwad Swami Maharaj. Um, Maharaj was so nicely glorifying uh, the, the Chapan Bhog. Um, so many items, so many pickles, how devotees make for Lord Jagannath. Then our Gaurang Prabhu now glorified the mood with which those Chapan Bhogs uh, should be prepared. Radha Rani, the mood of the Prajavasis. So it was such a feast to the ears and the eyes and uh, hopefully we can uh, we can remove some of our nartha so we can pull the rope of the Jagannath cart with that mood and we want to bring Krishna to our heart. Thank you so much Karan Prabhu. We are indebted to you for coming online. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. So, Dulal Prabhu had a question? Hare Krishna, Gaurang Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Wonderful, wonderful class. So deep. Um, you talked about how the Brajabasis were doing all their services for Krishna for a century after he left Vrindavan, every single day, exactly as if he was there. And how this is the difficult part of service in separation, not even knowing or getting the acknowledgement of the service that is done. So I was thinking we perform our services to our guru and Krishna in separation. Um, obviously our separation is not the same level as the Prajabhasis, but we don't physically see our guru or we may, you know, we see the deity, but we may not uh, feel their presence in our heart. So while we might not crave recognition and, you know, puja or acknowledgement or worship, is it not natural to want at least an acknowledgement and some kind of appreciation that what we are doing is correct and it's actually pleasing? Or how should we think about that? So that's a very nice question. And uh, in the context of our devotional life in uh, ISKCON, uh, Krishna has declared in the 11th canto to Uddhava, Mat bhakta puja diga. That worshipping my devotees is more than worshipping me. So therefore, when Prabhupada was in New Vrindavan and then uh, the devotees, just before he departed, he, the last uh, trip which he made to New Vrindavan and the palace of gold was under construction and the devotees mentioned to Prabhupada that we are preparing a nice palace of gold and we want to you know, decorate it with jewels. And Prabhupada immediately, you know, turned to the devotees and said, these devotees are my jewels. So therefore, uh, the litmus test of whether we are pleasing Krishna and the Guru and people whom we are trying to please, that has been made very simple for us. The benchmark has been given by Mahaprabhu that Gopi Bharatur Padakamalayor Das Das Anudas. That means 
if the person who is at the lowest rung of the ladder and the devotees in whose association you are in if you are able to please them and serve them and they are pleased and the vaishnav sangha is pleased then please know that through the parampara that emotion is transmitted and therefore you know anybody who has understood the vaishnav philosophy realizes that the test of how i am pleasing shrila prabhupada guru krishna and the parampara is the quality with which i am able to please the vaishnavas with whom i have been given an opportunity you know to serve and please so therefore uh, this is not part of vaishnav philosophy that uh, somehow krishna has given me the ability to only please the guru and displease everybody else so that kind of a logic is not accepted and therefore we have to as they say go through the various rungs of the ladder and therefore the vaishnavas with whom we spend our uh, major part of our devotional life they are our uh, they are they become the mirrors they show us you know where we are and how our devotional efforts are being received so therefore i do not think that uh, we uh, lose any opportunity to be with krishna and the guru and uh, shila prabhu padan parampara as long as we are getting opportunities to serve the devotees around us so i think that's the most important thing and understand that is a that is the reason why we call ourselves the das and we call others the prabhu and that's the whole idea of the parampara and that's what shukha mukhat amrita dravya samyutam as the parrot you know tastes upon the nectar of the fruit the sweetness increases so therefore just like if you have this binoculars the more lenses you put you know the closer the person appears in a telescope or in a so the magnification increases so the more number of vaishnavas you put between you and krishna the closer you are able to see krishna so therefore rather than trying to see krishna you just add higher magnification which means more lenses which means more number of devotees if they are between you and krishna the more you get opportunity to see krishna closely and feel krishna closely and experience krishna closely thank you so much thank you so much gauranga prabhu thank you hare krishna hare krishna thank you very much <laughs> thank you so much so shall we close here okay any other questions in the group thank okay. you very much gauranga prabhu thank you hare krishna all glory to you all best to prabhu and all best to ala sham sundar ji thank you hare krishna dhanwat prabhu ji hare krishna prabhu dhanwat pranam hare krishna hare krishna to everybody thank you prabhu ji hare krishna thank you prabhu ji hare krishna we can also as well gauranga prabhu mentioned yes we are going to celebrate Can not hear you, Prabhu. I think he froze. You know, yeah. On the body, Prabhu, we cannot hear you. Maybe you can disconnect and come back in.
So they got disconnected. Yeah, we were not able to hear you. Yeah, suddenly I got disconnected. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> announcement tomorrow, we'll be celebrating a theatre here at our centre. The theatre will start at 5 p.m., 5 to 6. We'll be taking the cart around our property three times as what we do every year. <clears throat> 